Hi everyone and welcome to the Free Range Diva. I want to talk to you today about how to look your best on camera, whether you're on your webcam or your phone. Um, I want to share some tips uh, with you that I have learned after many years of being an actor and many years of being a photographer. So um, if you want to know more, just keep watching. Uh, first of all, for, for you guys that may be watching, I'll leave a timestamp where, because uh, I'm going to start with makeup and I'll leave a timestamp where you can find the actual post makeup tips. Uh, but before you go there, let me just uh, say that I would advise you, strongly advise you, to get some translucent powder and powder down, uh, particularly the forehead and the nose and the chin, because these areas uh, can look like a bright beacon of light, uh, especially on, um, I'm noticing like webcams that, when you're looking at Skype and Zoom and things like that. So translucent powder, powder those those sections of your face down and uh, you will be doing a big favor for those that are watching you. So I have my foundation almost on. I'm using um, Ilia. This is their serum foundation because of all the foundations that I have and that I've tried, this one just looks awesome on camera. You know, I know not too many of you are going to have DSLR set up <laughs> in your house with the software that connects them, allows them to interact with your PC. Most of you are just going to be using really basic equipment, either your phone or the uh, camera that comes with your PC. So, uh, but so any foundation will do. What you want to do is make sure you get it. Uh, where you actually need it, you um, use your foundation more as a corrector rather than something you want to cover your face with. So I kept it in mostly in this area here as well. I'm going to go in with a concealer now and finish uh, this, you know, this discoloration under here. What you want to do is look very fresh and very healthy. That's the look we're going for today. Not, uh, you know, overly made up, very natural, just kind of your best self. I um, am going to powder this area down. I'm also gonna hit the nose and the chin with a little bit of powder. So when you're doing makeup for this kind of thing, forget your contour. The idea is you want to look fresh, you want to look healthy, even if you don't feel fresh or healthy. Um, it just, it, it hopefully will lift your mood and will certainly make you look really um, approachable to the people that you are talking to over the, uh, whether it's your grandkids on FaceTime or you know, your boss on Zoom. So a very smart uh, makeup artist once told me years ago that blush is instant health. And that's what we're going to do. Think about the areas of your face where you naturally flush when you, you know, are over, if you're blushing or if you have been really active, like working out or something and you get that flush, that's what we're going to recreate here. I'm going to use this bronzer and I'm going to use it the way you are supposed to use a bronzer which is on the high points of the face the points where the Sun would actually touch the face this is a uh, mineral fusions bronzer in what are you luster and it's two parts it's got the bronzer here and then a little bit of a highlight a little shimmer here we're gonna skip the shimmer and just go for the bronzer today put a little here above the nose and then hit the top of the forehead. <laughs> Using a bigger brush and I'm just gonna maneuver this around the face a little bit more. And then um, because of the fact that we've all been indoors a lot more, we might be looking a little corpse-like like and this bronzer will bring life and warmth back to the face and you might want to if your neck is looking a little less than it should sorry i'm looking away so much i have a mirror right here so that's what i'm looking at but 
then just go ahead and warm up the neck a bit as well so that you don't have too much of a line of demarcation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use the same bronzer on the eyes and we're just going to use it to define the shape of the eye. We're not going to be doing any dramatic eye looks. We want this eye to look really easy. I'm going to quickly uh, shut the camera off while I do my eyebrows and then I'll come back and finish everything up. So the eyebrows are on. I'm going to finish the eyes now by using this black liner just at the lash line. We're trying to uh, just define the shape of the eye. So let me get in close and do that. The eyeliner is a little heavier than I would like, so I'm going to use this little brush right here to diffuse it out a little bit, and I'm going to use the bronzer again for that as well. So you may or may not know that, um, yeah, I'm an actor. Uh, I have been doing that for the last, oh my God, 10, 15 years. Lot, well, even longer than that, before I moved back to L.A. Um, but when I was 25, I lived in Hawaii, and I worked there as a camera girl, taking pictures of... I'm going to put... I'm going to use this underneath the, uh, the, the lower lash again, just to help define it. This is brown. This is a brown shade from Lima Pure. And yeah, I, I took pictures of uh, tourists. I primarily worked with Japanese tourists because I lived in a boarding house and one of the staff members there was from Japan and so she taught me enough Japanese so that I could do the job. Although I've forgotten most of it now. Dozo warate kurasai. So, um, <laughs> so, but, and it was fun. And, and I was pretty good at it, especially because I could, I had a, ability to help people relax in front of the camera. And so when I moved back to LA, mascara from Physicians Formula, I uh, went to work as an intern with two different photographers. One was primarily fashion and the other did uh, still uh, advertising shots, still shots of products for billboards. So uh, I learned a lot about lighting, uh, outdoor lighting, indoor lighting. Uh, and and then about six months later, I got the opportunity to, uh, I went to work for a company and uh, was given my own photography studio. It Initially, when they hired me, it was in sales because I was obviously had a thing, I was very good with people. But um, and also they had never hired a female photographer before because the work was, was, uh, it was, it was hard. It was physical, you know, hard physical work because of the, the technique that they used for shooting. However, one of the other photographers went to bat for me and I got the training and then eventually I got my studio. So, okay. I think the eyelashes are on. Let me just double check. So a lot of the tips that I'm going to be talking to you today about are come from that background as well as the fact that I've also worked with makeup artists and done a lot of, quite a few makeup on camera makeup workshops as well. Uh, lipstick. I have a new lip color here from Color the World. This is called Sunset. Pretty coral. Everywhere you look these days, you're seeing a lot of coral lips. So uh, uh, I went, the last time Color the World had a sale, I went and I got two new coral, uh, their coral lip shades. Let's start by outlining these lips, okay? I had on a, had on a little bit of lip balm when I started this uh, tutorial. This color leans more into the pink uh, and does a really good job at just kind of 
making your lips look your lips but better and so I think uh, I'm going to balance out I've only put bronzer on my cheeks and I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of coral blush over that looking at it uh, here in the mirror it uh, yeah it needs a little bit more balance so a little bit of coral soften that up a bit so that's the basic makeup what we what I did is I I uh, just wanted to bring out the crease here bring the shadow up a little bit to sort of raise you know the the eyes the shape of my eyes which are a little bit almond but they point down and uh, give me a nice defined brow and now we're ready to go so to sum up for makeup keep it light make it sheer to medium coverage place it only where you need it think I'm correcting not covering control your glow so no highlighter um, you know use powder where you need it bronzer on the high points of the face and uh, keep your lip color whatever you know whatever you like whatever your lips but better think think that but you know like if your look if your lips look better in red then go with the red uh, okay so tip number one keep your camera is camera angle you want to place your camera about how far about maybe three to five feet away from you and position it so that the lens is about two inches above your eyes. What this does is it allows you to look directly into the camera without uh, looking up or down. It should your eye level should meet the camera um, in a more natural way as if you were actually looking into somebody's eyes as you talk. I'm going to take the camera off my tripod here and show you what not to do. <laughs> So this is about the correct eye level. If your camera is too high, it's you just look strange. You know, you look like you're looking up at somebody. And if it's too low, well, let me just show you. Yeah, need I say more? <sighs> the things that I don't do that I do for you guys. Yeah, I just decided to take one for the team and let you see. We have we all have jowls, we have wrinkles, and looking too low just enhances those. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm cringing. I don't want to see that footage when it comes back. All right. Yeah, so think uh, if you're off your computer, you know where your webcam is, just raise your computer up a little bit so that when, you, when you're sitting up straight and looking at it, it's directly into the, you know, it's about two inches above your eye. Same thing with your phone. When it comes to your phone, if you have one of these little guys, I forget what these are actually called. It's an adapter. You stick your phone in it like so. Tighten this down like that and then this you can sit this on a tripod and it uh, will keep it stable well there we go sorry stable and level so that uh, you know you, your hands free basically there's a, as you can see underneath here there's a screw the screws directly onto a tripod and I will cut in uh, exactly what that looks like so you can see the setup uh, you can use usually these things come with um, like a, a selfie stick or some tripod sets, but they're not that expensive. They're really cheap and they can really make your life easier uh, if you're going to be doing most of this stuff with your phone. Number two, look at the lens, uh, not your image. If you're using your phone, you will, well, if you're using the webcam, it's really bad. You you want to know where your, your lens is and not look at the image that's being uh, you know shown back to you because otherwise that you end up with something like this where you end up talking to someone but you're not really looking at them or you're looking over here somewhere and it just looks weird it's like who is she talking to and why isn't she looking at me I see uh, youtubers do this 
all the time, especially new, newer ones until they figure out that, oh, this doesn't really look right. I need to actually look into the lens. So um, be mindful of where your lens is on your, on your phone. It's a little bit easier because you're getting an image back at you that's not you, but uh, you know you don't know what you look like going out. So if you can just keep that in mind and uh, know where the, be aware of where your lens actually is and try and give your eyes to that lens as much as you possibly can. Number three, let's talk lighting, shall we? So the best light, the most easiest and accessible light is natural light coming from a window. Not direct light, but indirect. You don't want direct sun shining in and sitting in front of that because it's too harsh. What you want is uh, what is known as open shade. Um, it's if you shoot outside uh, and you're shooting under a tree, that is open shade. So you're getting a diffused, indirect, gentle light. And I can tell you this light um, can make anybody look gorgeous. When I first moved to Cal back to California and I had headshots taken, the photographer that I went to shot everything outside in open shade and I could not believe how beautiful, how natural your skin tone looks. Uh, you don't get a lot of weird shadows. So um, think if you can be about at least five feet away even more from uh, an open window that has good light coming in. Even better if you've got two windows in that particular room and you can kind of sandwich yourself midway between the two uh, so that you have light coming directly and then light coming off from one side, like, which is what I have here. I have what's called a fill light. I'm probably about six feet away from the front window facing north and then off to the west i'm about double that amount of space away from that one to give me just a more gentle light coming from the west and so what that does is it helps fill in uh shadows that you don't that like your you know lines on faces and you know, other wrinkles and things like that that you don't really want highlighted you want softened if your lighting isn't that great Feel free to, to use a lamp, particularly if you have a lamp with a white shade. Uh, again, about three to five feet away from you. Maybe not directly, but slightly, instead of being straight on, slightly off to the side like this. And use an incandescent bulb, that's fine. It will give you a warmer light. It can help augment. I often do that here if it's you know not a particularly, if it's a grayer day or something. It, uh, again, will give you more light and help uh, so, you know, soften the, the planes of the face. Don't get too close to either a lamp or your window because you will get blown out, which is, it'll just be like washed out, totally white and highlighted, and we don't want that. If wherever your room is, move around the room a little bit and really look at, what, at the quality of the light that's coming in. Uh, I noticed that my the camera on my tablet and on my phone tends to be very very uh contrasty uh it really picks up it really like augments whatever you know it gives you a deep saturation i guess of colors and so that just augments the sh shady parts and not so much the highlighty parts so just be aware of that you might need to move closer uh, uh to a, to your light source depending on what your camera's doing um those of you who have the iphone higher numbers get those cameras are awesome do you don't even have to worry just get in front of you know like about six feet away from a five to six feet away from a window and you're going to look great and before i leave the subject of light altogether if you happen to have a box or anything that's white put that uh on your desk under your chin uh you know right in front of you because what this will do and I will put it here and hopefully you can see is it throws any light that's coming from above here there I just uh, turned on the overhead it'll bounce that light back up into your face and that will then give you a sorry I wasn't looking at you <laughs> let's do what I say don't do what I do uh, yeah that'll give you It'll, it'll uh, soften the, any sort of, 
you know, wrinkles and things that are going on under here and as well as in the lower part of the face. So yeah, hopefully I'm moving this around. So hopefully you can see what that's doing with the light. Uh, microphones briefly, if you want to, oh, I have to get it. I don't have it in front of me. If you feel like if you're using your phone, don't even worry about this. If you're on your computer and you feel like you're, you're, you know, like you're dealing with a lag time. I know Skype is notorious for this sound lagging the picture. It can help if you use uh, a microphone. You can either use a lav mic, which are really cheap. Those are the little ones that, you know, hook onto your uh, chest or your clothing. Or you can use something like this, which hooks into your USB port on your computer and can just give you a little bit better sound quality and prevent some of that lagging in the, in the um, uh, sound to picture that can often happen uh, when you're using, I notice it more on Skype than I do on things that I, you know, see done with Zoom. Also, I can say that uh, I recently, let me get a little bit closer here. I recently did a, a webinar, web seminar, with uh, a software called Intrada, which is was so much better than Zoom or Skype. I was really impressed. And uh, if you are working with a company, you may also be using um, from, it's WebEx, it's from uh, Cisco. Uh, I have used that years and years ago. I used to work remotely uh, from my, the last company that I worked with, and they used uh, um, that software from Cisco, which is also really, really good. Finally, the last thing that I wanna to talk to you about is framing. And by that, I mean where you position yourself to your camera lens. So the ideal framing is, and I actually should come in a little bit closer. I'm checking my framing. Oopsie. Okay, uh, I, ideally, you want to think in terms of thirds. You want to do a frame it so you've got one third here, one third here, and then the final third on top. So let me pull back. I could be a little bit closer. So if we're doing about like here, here, and then here. And that way, what that does is it puts your eyes more in the center of the frame. Let me come in. Uh, I cut, yeah, about there. So I could, let's just do this real fast. Bring that up a little bit and that raises the eye level a little bit as well and now I am more balanced in the frame and that's really what you want especially if you're doing conferences you don't want to be way up here you know like this talking head with very little chest uh, you want to look more like a um, like again like you're having a conversation on your phone just try and uh, you are going to look like a talking head, but that's okay. Uh, you're, the nice thing about uh, uh, the, the camera technology today is that no matter where your eyes are, your autofocus is going to go immediately to them. And so you're going to be in focus, whether you're close up here or a little bit further back. But again, for conferences and, and uh, webinars and things like that, um, be, you know, this is a this is a this is really really important especially because you want the attention on your eyes uh and so that's going to wrap it up any additional in terms of background keep it you know not too busy don't make it too busy clothing again stick with solid colors brighter colors are going to make you look healthier on camera uh and um less likely to scare the, the grandkids. <laughs> and uh, again, colors that are comp that complement you. I would avoid white only because it can wash you out. Um, but then again, most of the modern cameras, like again, if you're using the iPhone 10, 11, whatever, don't even worry about it. Uh, just stay away from patterns would be my, my suggestion um, so that it's not too distracting, especially if you're moving around. Okay, everybody, uh, I hope this video was helpful. Um, and, you know, even if you're just just Skyping and, and, and you know, FaceTiming with the grandkids, again, you want to look your best. You don't want to 
make them think that, oh my God, what's wrong with, why does grandma look so awful today? So, uh, or grandpa. So, um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see more content like this, then please subscribe. I put out videos on uh, every Tuesday, and sometimes I throw in some extras during the week too. So, um, yeah, until I see you again in my next video, I'm wishing you a wonderful day, wonderful week. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Bye!